Okay, okay, I'm not going to show the whole of the trailer versus reality. We know what Atlas went through at the beginning. And if you don't know, well, I'm going to give you a quick, brief rundown. But let me just start this video by saying this is a brand new series where I take a look at everything that happened or is happening with a game currently. They won't always be negative pieces. They may, in fact, be positive. They may be ways of trying to get you to think differently about the games you've heard in the news or games that you may have thought about trying yourself. So before you start writing Atlas is trash or Atlas is the best thing to happen to gaming, I doubt anyone's writing that right now, but you never know, wait until I've finished with my piece. Then pop your comments down below what you think about Atlas. Maybe I'll hopefully have changed your mind Maybe I'll give you a reason to maybe check the game out, or I'll give you more reasons to hate on the game. For this type of video, it's time to put away the hat and see what's happening in the world of pirates one month on. So that trailer got over 1.4 million views. It made a channel that had about 30 subs propel to 1.5 thousand. And it did accurately affect the gameplay experience of Atlas in the first 24 hours if he was lucky enough to get on. It starts much earlier than a failed launch though. Atlas was first leaked by accident on the Ark Survival Vol YouTube page. No one really knew what it was, but after some digging around, I discovered it was going to be a 1.5 game. It wasn't going to be a direct mod or DLC for Ark Survival Evolved, and it wasn't going to be Ark 2. It was going to be a 1.5 game. Now, that doesn't sound so bad, does it? If you can take the best things from Ark and go in a brand new genre, a brand new direction, but utilising some of the assets to make life a bit easier on development, lots of game developers do this, and it's not usually that much of a big deal or problem. But most game developers take out the base part of the game that they're working from. They don't include it in the early launch access part where you can actually access and see it was originally meant as a mod. There's no dispute in, as you can see from this gameplay, it says Ocean. It was a mod added alongside the other story arcs, the three mods that basically came with Ark Survival Evolved, created by modders or wildcard over the years. Q damnation, Q everyone on the interweb saying how terrible it was that a game developer was daring to use a remodeled asset or some other gameplay features from a previous game. Conveniently forgetting the whole host of games that are always doing this. EA Sports, even as far as Assassin's Creed, maybe in Dark Souls and Bloodborne. I've used these examples before in defending Atlas at one point. However, there is a legitimate call to say that these companies don't advertise the games as brand new experiences. They advertise them as sequels and as such it means they can reuse the stuff that they have. When you go and promote the game as a brand new game and experience and it is a game that's going to stand on its own, players, consumers expect to see some actual effort put into that. They want to see that it has got brand new features and it isn't just recycled. This was quickly patched out so you can no longer access this part of the game, but it stands there as a monument to how not to launch your game. Add to that the fact that no one could get on the servers, multiple delays in the space of days where people were only getting told the game wasn't coming out an hour before or even hours after the original release date. And you quickly find yourself in a bit of a toxic environment. Add to that that they promoted the game heavily by paying up to $12,000 to streamers like Summit 1G to promote the game, who in fact, at the end of the day, ended up trashing it just as much as promoting it. Terrible launch, absolutely, and a lesson hopefully learned by Grapeshot, formerly known as Wildcard, but I don't think it will be. You can choose when you launch your early access game. Of course, money's always going to be a big factor for a small independent games company, but when you've made over 12 million copies sold of your previous game, you would think you've got the time and resources to plan these things out a little bit better. I don't think they anticipated the backlash against them. The landscape of launching a game now in 2018 slash 19 is very different than 2015 slash 16. We gamers are acutely aware there are lots of games out there and we won't stand for bullshit anymore. Loot boxes, microtransactions, lack of content, we have gone ham on companies that deliver us subpar experiences and I think the grape shot devs are probably starting to learn they can't just put something out and expect it to do fantastically well anymore. 
On the flip side, of course, it is an early access game, and that should give you a little bit of leeway to iron out some kinks, and there's a whole host of problems that always come with online games, regardless of whether they're early access or not. The internet did kind of react quite badly, and I think that was just because of the time of the year, after seeing so many disappointments, particularly in the later stage of the year, with things like Red Dead Online and Fallout 76, games have just had enough. The very definition of early access is not to just put anything out there to make some money, it is to give your gamers, the people who are going to be buying your game, a chance to play and help develop it. It is not for a demo, it is not for alpha testing, it is there to really strengthen and show you've got a core concept and you want people to help you make that concept better. In the background you are seeing clips of Subnautica, which has also just announced a brand new game in the set in the Subnautica world. Below Zero is going to be an early access title coming very soon in the next week or two. It's going to follow the same lead as Subnautica, giving players a chance to take part and give feedback on what works and what doesn't work in the game. But did you know that Subnautica Below Zero was originally penciled in as DLC for the base game? It wasn't meant to be a standalone experience. Also, the idea of Arctic and snow biomes that are going to be in the brand new game were again meant to be part of DLC for the original as was the player's ability to maybe choose a female character and not just have the stock standard male character in the original Subnautica. I mention this because this goes unnoticed and Subnautica is a very popular game just like Ark Survival Evolved yet one developer can do it under the radar and another developer really gets a whole load of backlash against it. It's all about promoting, it's all about marketing and it's all about being upfront with the players. But I still think it's worth noting, if you're there desperately trying to criticise Wildcard or Grapeshot for reusing assets or not coming out with a DLC for Ark instead of making it a standalone game, I hope you have that same judgement for things like Subnautica Below Zero. But definitively, let's put it to bed, I've got no problem with a game developer reusing assets. I've got no problem with a game developer reusing the base game to create something new, particularly if it's early access, where the start point should hopefully be very different to what we'll actually get come the end of a two-year development cycle. But that's that. What about Atlas, the players? Who's actually playing this game? Who is actually giving this game any attention? You'd be surprised to know that actually quite a lot. Judging on the Steam player charts, it peaked at around 57,000 players. That is a pretty good number. Maybe not as big as its predecessor, Ark Survival Evolved, or some of the other big, massive online games out there. But it didn't manage to lose nearly half its player base in the space of just a month. It's actually managed to maintain quite a lot, averaging around 32 to 35,000 players peaks of still 42,000 and some lows of around 14,000. Atlas is still being played one month later on. That is much more than can be said for other games, particularly games like Scum. I use Scum as a reference because when it launched last year in the summertime, it had over 68,000 players playing it at its peak. One million people bought the game in three weeks of launch. But that number dropped significantly. In fact, only a month and a couple of days later, it's lost nearly 50,000 players. When you compare that to Atlas, where Atlas has still only lost not even half its player base one month later on, and you can see there is a lot of people enjoying the game, or people are definitely picking it up and giving it a try, even after such a terrible, terrible way to start. Atlas does fall short of the way that Ark Survival Evolved launch. Ark pretty much kept its player base and is pretty much the standard on how you want your concurrent players to be playing your game over time. Always at a high number, always there consistently with updates throughout its early access period and afterwards. But why is that? Why are people still playing Atlas? Well, quite frankly, there's still nothing much going around like it. See if these could be conditioned as maybe the next best bet, but that's only if you own an Xbox or Windows 10 version. For everyone else on PC who just wants to play an MMO style game with much maybe grander, bigger scope, then Atlas could possibly serve up that experience. There are some other games out there that maybe can come close, but nothing set in the pirate world. Now Atlas still has some way to go before it's considered a pirate game. Right now it's still very too much like Ark Survival Evolved in survival aspects. 
And that is the big criticism that came from a lot of the top streamers and a lot of people early on. We just want to be pirates. We don't want to be bogged down in survival aspects. We don't want to be hitting trees for 10 hours. Let us go out there. Let us be pirates. That's not to say you can't be an upstanding company that has morals, but you know, the pirate life is for me. Grapeshot have added in a bunch of updates since launch. In fact, they have had over 80 different updates. That is a staggering amount considering the game's only been out a month. Minor versions, big updates, things to correct and fix, make the networks a priority, stabilizing and making the servers playable. There's still a little bit of rubber banding, there's still massive amounts of lag depending on how busy your server is, but it is quite an experience. I've been playing it for a whole month now on PvP Official and I've loved every minute of it. The gameplay experience though is still very rough around the edges and it will be, it is still the start. But things like aiming and melee combat need much work and there are lots and lots of ideas and procedures going around that maybe need to be fixed, nerfed or buffed. I don't really want to go into it wholesale. What this video is really just trying to show you is the game has gone through lots of changes and maybe needs a second look by people sitting on the fence. But yes, people can see the potential in the game and I think that's why they've stuck around and why they've been picking it up regardless of all the negative reviews. You really do feel like you're exploring the open seas. When you get something going like a raft or a sloop or a schooner and depending if you're playing PvP or PvE, it's a real experience going from one map to another map or one island to another, sailing seas, seeing what kind of resources the next area will have, what biomes will give you different creatures, it's a real experience and that's what it has best going for it. Atlas is that exploration experience. From a PvP side of things where I've been most at, it is definitely experience as well. Double dealing, politics, backstabbing, all the things that go on, being alert at all times because you can get raided at any time, it really heightens the core gameplay. Maybe not always to a positive effect, there still needs to be some balance changes with how you can raid offline. I initially said I didn't mind, but after being raided offline pretty much the majority of the time, it's certainly an issue I think needs to be bettered. But there is so much potential in Atlas, hence why I've been doing it on my channel and it's been causing my channel to lose quite a few subs. Literally every video I've posted about Atlas on a daily basis, I've lost some subs that day, much more than I normally would lose. In fact, when I took three or four days off to move house, hence why my mic is a little bit echoey in this video, I actually gained subs because I wasn't uploading any Atlas content. But I believe in putting your money where your mouth is. If I enjoy a game, I want to play that game. And my new thing for 2019 was, if I don't like a game anymore, I'm not going to cover it on my channel. And I do just see the potential in Atlas, and I'm enjoying lots of aspects of it, hence why I'm still going to be playing it and covering it on my channel or on Twitch. Currently right now, if you're in a company on PvP, you're pretty much being forced to merge with bigger companies to make yourself a huge alliance to take on some of the bigger, bigger ones out there. Forget the Chinese, it doesn't matter who you are, French, Chinese, whatever. There are lots of companies out there itching for a fight, trying to grab up land and resources. Raiding is definitely one of the most fun aspects of the game. For PvE, I'm not too sure. All I know is that lots of people are having fun experiencing building up and getting resources together and trying to grow their company and take on some of the enemies. But the PvE side is still very much lacking in terms of the AI of the enemies as well as what to actually do if you're not just taking out ghost ships. Trade, commerce, politics, all that will come and it will enhance PvE just as much as PvP because it means that we'll be able to have a reason to go and search other places, not just to explore, but actually to export your hard-gotten crops or other things that you may be able to procure. There is something about following a game from the very first stages and it is that feeling I got from covering Ark Survival Evolved when it first launched on the Xbox. Being part of something and seeing how it grows and changes. It's not always great, they've recently just added a fountain in the youth, loads of people went over to it to try and get reduced age because you do age in the game and a couple, well I say a few, lots of people reported a glitch that actually meant they had to redo the whole experience because they still ended up looking like a giant shriveled prune. So, lots of problems and there will be, but Atlas does offer gameplay experience I don't think any other games have at the moment. There are other MMOs, you've got Life is Feudal, you've got other big gaming survival games like Conan and Ark, but none of them really match that feeling of exploration as much as this does. And I don't think there's going to be many games out on the horizon that can match what Atlas is trying to achieve. 
In a recent live stream that I managed to cover and get lots of footage of, they also revealed a bunch of game art implementation coming in February. A big update which is going to add underwater vehicles. You're going to be able to pilot your own exploratory submarine. It's not going to be combat focused. It's purely there for you to go and expand your exploration options. You'll be able to go and discover underwater chasms and caves, maybe lost partial cities. There's going to be brand new biomes called the Trench that are light under the water as well add to that a whole host of new cosmetic items that are going to be added to the game that you can buy and the future of atlas already is starting to look pretty good i'm loving the way that the content is going to be coming so soon after launch and if they carry on like they did with arc always adding new creatures always adding new ways to do things and improving the game then i think atlas has got a real shot what Atlas does need to do though is make sure that optimizations are always at the forefront of its mind and despite the many, many negatives and the videos out there trashing the game, a whole host of people are still intent on actually watching it. On Twitch right now, there's over 10,000 people currently watching Atlas. Bearing in mind this is 11 o'clock in the morning in the UK, that's a pretty good number. Compare that to how many people are watching Ark, only a thousand, and some of the other games like Scum and even PUBG, although it's leading, doesn't have nowhere near the viewership it used to. So there is a market for different games and I think Atlas is a different enough game. It's good for streamers, you can talk and interact while you're traveling to other islands because it can get a little bit quiet, but there is a lot going on and anything can happen. And that's what people love watching on Twitch. They love seeing immersive gameplay experiences that can just change and become something completely different from what the streamer expected or their audience. Hence why I'm going to be playing a lot more Atlas on Twitch. So one month on, lots of updates, lots of features, lots of fixes. Still a long way to go, no doubt about it. But the future is looking like they're putting a lot of time and effort into the game, just as they have done since it launched. Lots of players are still playing it, a better ratio than Scum. Also taking to the fact that the viewers are still watching Atlas and people are enjoying the content that streamers and makers are actually putting into the game. It does paint a different picture from what you experienced at the start. There is absolutely the criticism justified for what they did they launched it in a terrible state they didn't test it enough and they could have maybe have done that a little bit more with some open alphas or open betas but it's done now we can only learn we can only go on what they're doing right now and the effort they've been putting in the developers shows me that atlas is coming a long way i'm not some sort of shield i don't need to do this but I can see potential, and when I see potential and hard work being put into something, I can get behind that game and support it. And I'm kind of hoping other people can too. I'm enjoying the game. I want you guys to enjoy the game too. So if you're on PC, you've been on the fence, I think maybe now is still a little bit too early to maybe go out and buy the game. Give it another month. Let's see what this big update adds. Let's see how much it all works and ties in. New biome, new land masses, new vehicles, new cosmetics. If that goes down well, I think Atlas could be well worth your time. Just let's see how it gets on. So don't believe all the vitriol or the negativity. Make some more still decisions yourself. Go and take a look at some of the Steam reviews right now and you'll find that most of the recent ones are actually more positive than some of the ones you've obviously saw in the initial days of launch. There's no forgiving bad management, there's no forgiving a bad launch, but nevertheless, when you can see the hard work, like I said, the potential, I think we can all give a game another try. I am Jay Plays Games. make sure you like up this video, make sure you've got notifications turned on, and expect to see me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday for what's happening, giving you the lowdown on what I find interesting in the game. Until then, I'll see you rat bags on the high seas.